A lot of it has to do with the spontaneity, and like most things, the good things are the best because of their spontaneity and come out of accident. This process, I think, made it possible for Richard to take his art icons and the artists of the past that he really thought of as being his, uh, not mentors, but people that he looked up to and mixing it with Hollywood that was kind of our training when we were at interview. So it's given him a chance to bring those two elements together and show them here in Beverly Hills. How's it going? Mr. Coburn, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Are you familiar with Richard Bernstein's well, art? Uh, that's why I'm here, to become more familiar with him. Yes, I, I know a little bit about him. Uh, you've got to see the stuff straight up. Then you know more about it. I like this new work. Um, I said it a couple of times tonight. I think it's explosive. If you look around the room, there's one of Picasso, there's one of Mondrian. Uh, on the other side, there's one of Mick Jagger and Madonna. And they're all explosions. Um, the characters and the personalities uh, kind of come out in the explosiveness, which is wonderful. It's exciting work. Yeah, it really is exciting. Oh, here's Richard. Richard, Richard, oh, yeah. Richard. 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 Richard.
to me, and it's really not true. We were discussing that just recently, and someone gave me access, and I did an album cover for Grace Jones, and I said, what can I do next with this to learn more about it? Then I was commissioned by the United Nations to do a series of stamps for them, and that was quite exciting, and it was the first time they had computer-generated stamps, and I was in very good company, seeing as how they had Dolly and Chagall and Warhol, all the way up to uh, Keith Haring and Anthony Quinn. And, and how did you two meet? I was the West Coast editor of Interview for many, many years, and when I met Richard, I was in New York at an opening, and somebody came up to me and said, that is Richard Bernstein. He is the handsomest man in New York and one of the best artists. And I'll never forget that because I looked over at Richard and he was just so handsome. And he went, he's right. But he's also a good artist. He talked about going to the schools that he went to. But he has a master's in uh, art history and fine arts and a bachelor's of fine arts. And he really knows how to mix color and this new computer generated work really is exciting because it's hands on in a different way. Yeah, it is. It's very exciting and very, very colorful. Um, when, I feel it's almost like uh, splitting the atom with a photographic image. And uh, you could have sort of illustrate this before, but you can never do it mechanically. It's a fascinating process. But it's wonderful. You know, they have never been able to before to sort of, you know, make a, uh, an image look like a, a pool of paint. Is it, is it possible to summarize basically how, how you use the computer graphics and how you bring that into your art form? Is that w well, without getting I, extremely technical, so we don't know what? Okay. You're well, the thing is, what started this new series of paintings was I was t I was kind of using the idea of the of the recognizable image um, and using that as a basic structure to incorporate um, a lot of the sort of art art uh, sort of mall art that we have seen around for several decades, like the drip art that, you know, has seen the evolution started with Jackson Pollock, going all the way into Memphis furniture and fashion and then back again. Things like spin art, you know, that we saw in the 60s and things like tie-dye and things. And I was kind of bringing them two together using the, the, the uh, image you know, the recognizable face, whether it was sort of negative, combining those two things into an art form, which seemed very exciting, and this is the first time I'm showing the computer-generated images uh, with that incorporated. So it's kind of like a low art and high art combined together into, you know, all my colors and favorite things. It's, it's sort of like, you know, pop art. I, I, when an idea has reached its time, you know, all these, all these guys were working separately and not reading art magazines and coming to the same conclusion. It's very interesting because um, you see it now starting to happen all over, a lot of computer artists and things like that. But I feel very secure in the fact that, you know, that my work is very personal and it comes out of a whole gestalt of, of you know, my, some of my experiences as an artist and a human being. I curated some shows at Otis Parsons Gallery and I was lucky enough to have some of Richard's work in those shows and also uh, different museums across the country and we've always made sure that when we use portraiture, Richard is right there at the forefront. It's wonderful, wonderful. Well, I know you have a lot to do at the party here, a lot of people to talk to. Thank you very much. John Quinn and Richard Bernstein. I'd love to. Maggie and Joanna. <laughs> This is actually the first time I've seen his work, so it's all new for me. <laughs> she said this is the place to be and it's hot, so that's why I'm here, you know. <laughs> but I know his work from Interview Magazine, and I love it. I think it's very interesting. I think it might even be more interesting than Andy Warhol. I like it better than Andy Warhol's work. I love Richard Bernstein's work, and I'm delighted to be here. And what I want to say is that thanks to people and one person like Joan Quinn, art today has an opportunity to mix and mingle and become part of everyone's life because of her efforts.